The first two videos in my relation series have been very well received, and I've had a lot of requests to see a transition between a round and a square, so I've made a form for that. This is a 6 inch diameter disc, and this is a 6 inch square base, and I've spaced them 3.5 inches apart. So I'll use the rollation technique again to make the pattern to create this part. And I'll be using an improved process to create the pattern. Some of my viewers have had great suggestions for fine tuning the rollation process. One of my favorites is putting a little rubber cement on the edges of the form, so when you roll it across the pattern paper, it's much less likely to skid. That really helps a lot. And in my previous videos, I used a pencil to trace along the edge of the form. That works, but there's a much better way, which I've come to prefer. Where it really works well is to use a thin layer of aluminum foil on top of your pattern paper. So I'm going to use spray adhesive to hold the foil to the paper. Just a light coating of adhesive is all it takes. And I'm going to let that dry for a minute. So now I can lay down the aluminum foil and I'll just roll it out. So this gives us enough material to make a lot of patterns. I'm going to make this from two pieces of metal. So there's going to be a welded seam in two of the corners. So when I lay this out, I need to capture the pattern all across two sides, plus a little extra to get leverage for bending. So let's start with this up on the corner. I'm going to roll it away from me first. Then we'll roll over to the next position. And I'm going to mark the center points on the round disc. Now we'll roll back the other way. I'm also going to tip this up on end so it makes a nice crisp impression on the back side of the form. Okay, so now I can cut this out. So there's our pattern. Using a square, I'm going to draw a line to the center of each of the quadrants I marked on the pattern. And now I can trim the excess off the ends. So using this pattern, I'll cut out two blanks from 20 gauge steel. I cut two blanks of metal and I added a quarter inch extra material to the top to give me some wiggle room. The base of the form is 3 quarters inch thick and I want the part to have a flat area to match. Also, I need notches at the corners to accommodate the forming I'll be doing. So I've drawn a line 3 quarters inch away from the bottom edge and made notches that meet the line. And then I've drawn lines that will meet the notches on the disc. So this disc has quadrants marked on it and more notches halfway between the quadrants and each of these lines comes right up to meet one of these notches. So I've drawn radial lines on a piece of paper and you can see that if a slight bend is made on each of these lines it will create a bend that matches the form precisely. It's time to lay out the bend line on our blanks. I want to be efficient with this because we have two blanks and each blank has three areas where it needs a radial pattern of lines so I want to do one layout that I can use for each of these corners. So I'll show you the process I'll use. First of all, I'm going to use a scriber to put a point right at the base of this where all these lines will converge. And then I'm going to draw a line on the blank that goes from that point right out to the edge of the metal. I'm going to continue that line onto the paper behind the metal. Let's do that on the other side. So we have an angle here close to 70 degrees. I want to divide this into eight equal parts. And it's a little bit tricky to do that with measuring devices. 
I mean, if we divide 70 by 8, that gives me roughly 7 point something degrees for each increment. And it's hard to measure angles that small with simple tools. So I'm going to do this a different way. I'm going to project these lines to the point where they meet. Then I'm going to use a compass, and I've put a felt tip marker on the nose of this compass. And with this compass, I'm going to draw an arc some arbitrary distance away from the apex. Let's make this a fairly large arc. And then using dividers, I'm going to divide this into eight equal segments. So let's take a stab at this. So that's a little bit too big. I'll close it down a little bit, try it again. Need to go just a little bit larger. Just about there. Okay, we got it. Eight equal divisions. So I'll use my felt tip marker to mark these on the paper. You could actually get better precision using a sharp pencil for this. I'm using a pen so it shows up on the camera better. Okay, so there's our eight equal divisions. And now I'll draw lines from this apex through those points I've just laid out. So there's our layout, eight equal divisions. So now I'll put the apex of this notch right on that point. I'll line up these lines with the longer lines. And now I can find out the point on the edge of our blank where these lines need to meet. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because you can see that the space here is much wider than the space here, even though the angle between them is equal. So let's continue our layout. So we have all the bend lines on this corner. Let's go on to this one. So I'll do the same layout on the second blank, and then we can start bending. I'm using the same bending fixture I used in the last relation video. It's really simple. It's just two inch and a half cold rolled seal bars clamped together with the spacer between them, and the spacer is just a little bit thicker than the metal we're bending. So all I have to do is to slide this into place. I want to get the corner of this top bar right at the base of the notch in this part. And then I'll use vice grips to apply the clamping pressure. And to make the bend, all I need to do is to press up on this little end here. And I have to move in one direction with this fixture. I can't back up and redo something. So I want to check my progress pretty frequently and make adjustments if I need to. So I'm just guessing about how much each bend needs to be. And pretty soon I'll check it on our fixture. Everything that I'm bending right now will get cut off, but it's nice to have that extra material just for the leverage I need to make the bends. Okay, so let's try this on the fixture just to get some sense of how I'm doing. So the radius of curvature actually looks pretty darn good. So I'll continue with this process. Okay, we're just about to the center of the bend. Then I'm going to try this whole corner into place on our fixture. Looks like it's overbent a little bit. This is over 90, so I'll open that up a little bit. Get this corner to be 90 degrees, then stick that on the fixture. And it's actually matching that curvature very, very, very well. So I may adjust that later, but that's certainly good enough for now. So let's keep moving. So we'll put this back into the fixture and start making the bends going to the next corner. Let's check our progress again. We'll try this onto our fixture. 
So I've made the bends a little bit sharper than they need to be. But it's not too hard to fix that. All I need to do is just press them out against a flat surface. So it looks like it needs a little bit more bend right where I'm placing my thumb. Tighten that up a little bit. And it's pretty good. Probably good enough for where we're at. I can fine tune this later, but I want to continue with the bending for now. Okay, we're coming up on the last bend on this corner. So I can see I've gone a little bit over 90 degrees, so I'll straighten it out on this side. And then try it on our fixture. And it's a little bit overbent in the area between my fingers. So I'll put that against a flat surface and press out on both sides. Try it again. It's a little bit more unbending in that corner. And this has gone under 90, so I'll tighten that up. I'm going to use a hammer now to tap this in. Get just a little bit more angle right in the corner. So that's fitting super well. So I'm going to go right on to the last corner. So there certainly are better ways to make these bends. If you have a bending brake, of course, that's how you do it. But I'm designing this video for people who may not happen to have a bending brake. They're rather expensive tools. And I think you'll see that we're going to get a pretty decent result in the end. So I'm going to trim this now. I'm going to make a cut from this corner right to the center of this bend on both sides. And then I'll do the forming on the second part. So both pieces are fitting the form very nicely now. Here's the piece we just formed. And we'll put the first piece into place on top of it. And they really fit together pretty well. So there's a lot of overlap on these corners. There's a couple of inches overlap. So I'm going to remove much of this waste to get them to nestle together as snugly as I can and then I'll scribe these corners for the final trimming. Everything's clamped up tightly to the form, and I'm very happy with how things are fitting together. So now is the time that we'll scribe these edges for the final trimming. So I'll pull everything up tight, scribe one line on both sides. So now I'll trim it for the final time, and we'll tack weld the parts together. Let's talk about the machine setup for steel. First of all, I'll switch from the AC mode that I'm in to the mode for steel, and this is DC electrode negative. And to make a puddle on 20 gauge steel takes at least 35 amps. But I like to set the machine hotter than that. So I'm going to go up to about 50, and that way with the foot pedal I can give myself a little extra boost if I need it. So that's all we need to do for the machine settings. Let's take a look at the argon regulator now. I like to set the argon flow to 12 to 14 cubic feet per hour for steel. So I trim the edges and everything's clamped back up on the form. The fit up is beautiful, so let's put some tack welds on this. So that's enough tacks to hold everything. I'm going to take it off the form now. I'm going to work each of these tack welds with a hammer and dolly to make sure the metal is perfectly level. Then I'll finish the welds off the form, dress them, then we'll do the final checking for fit and trimming back on the form. I'm using a homemade post dolly to fit inside this to enable me to level the metal around the tack welds.
Okay, it's time to finish well this part. And I have two more corners to finish up. Okay, I'll dress these wells and we'll do the final tune-up. I'm going to cut the wells down with 50 grit abrasive first. Then I'll use 120 grit to get it smoother. Then I'll rotate it to the next size. I'll go back to the 50 grit. Then I'll go back to 120. I'll roll it over to the next side. Back to the 50 grit. And then the final step is to switch this to orbital mode and go over the whole surface with the orbit sander. So we're just about done with our transition. The last step is going to be to trim this top edge down flush with the disc on our form. And it would be easy to scribe this on the inside, but it would be difficult to see that scribe line because of the funny angle in here. So I want to find a way to scribe the outside, and I have a plan for that. I've made a little tool. It's just a piece of metal with a notch in it, and the notch can fit down over this flange, and then I can mark the outside. So I'm going to put some dicum on the outside of this. So I'll have a high contrast line to trim on. I'll give that just a minute to dry. Okay, and now I can scribe around the outside edge of this. I'll just rotate the part. I think that'll be easier than trying to move the tool. So there's our scribed line. Let's pull this off the form. And I'll trim right on that line. So I'll put this back on the form. And we are good to go. So the part cleaned up very nicely. I've got a very snug fit on the form, both top and bottom. The wells cleaned up perfectly. I'd call this one a success. So again, this is a great example of a part that you can lay out using the rollation process. I hope you're enjoying my videos. I invite you to like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified about when my next videos launch. I read all your comments and I do my best to answer every question. Now you can support my channel through Patreon. Just click the logo at the end of the video. I'll see you next time.